Thanks for getting on. My name is Rick Silva. You're in business. Have you ever said, I'm smarter than that guy. How come he's so much more successful than I am? I have leads. They never call me back. I hate getting stood up for appointments. I got to spend so much money on leads every month. Hey, what's the best lead source? Hey, do you advertise on Facebook? I've tried it. It doesn't work. I can't get friends and family members to send me referrals. I contact people. I call them on the phone. I can't get referrals or, or I have leads and they're just not the right type. We're going to answer all those concerns and a whole lot more right now. Again, for those of you watching this live, anything you want to ask, put it in the chat box. Ask any questions you want. If I don't answer it today, I'll answer it on a completely separate presentation. So most of you who registered filled this out, and I want you to see how many questions and concerns about networking that was sent in. So what I'm going to do for all of you for sending those questions, I'm going to do a whole nother webinar. The entire webinar is going to be answering the questions that you guys typed, the questions and concerns that you guys sent me. Today, what we're going to do is I'm going to explain to you and I'm going to show you uh, if you see on the screen, it says your networking blueprint. I'm going to give you from A to Z of what networking is. And networking is not uh, asking people. And it's not lead generating. That is not what networking is. So today I'm going to teach you what networking is. We're going to we're going to have some fun and hopefully you learn something. And so again, thanks for being here. My name is Rick Silva. I have two outcomes for our 90 minutes out real quick. Just so, oh, by the way, if you're seeing this on record down below the video on YouTube, type any questions you want. I'll answer them. Uh, this is going to go at least 90 minutes. We're going to have a break in the middle. We are going to have a bio break. I'm, I have it built in to have a three minute break about halfway through. So you guys have a chance to use the restroom and not miss anything. So at least 90 minutes together, I'm guessing. I'm going to share with you what I've learned over the last 17 years being a professional networker. And then at the end, I'll give you an invitation to look at my course. If you want to have some one-on-one -on -one coaching by me, I'll let you know all about that at the end. You love to cold call. You love it. You love chasing leads. You like getting stood up. You like getting all fired up and amped up learning how to overcome objections and you got to have the smile in the mirror and you got to smile and dial. You love it. You love every time you talk to somebody, you got to spend 10 or 15 minutes explaining to them who you are. Here's who I am. You got to sell yourself. You love doing that. You love hearing people say, uh, I have a friend who's a real estate agent. You love people asking you for discounts. If that's you, log off, log off the webinar. If you love the cold call and you think that's the way you're going to build a tremendous business and work half as much time as you do now, and make twice as much as you do now, if you think that's through cold calling and lead generating, this is not the webinar for you, okay? Just let you know. If you want the phone ringing where people are chasing you to do business with you, I'm the guy, okay? If you believe with the proper skills that you can have the phone ringing off the hook, if you believe they're learnable skills, Tiger Woods has like three coaches he did in his prime. Everybody needs help. Here's the agenda for what we're gonna work on today. I'm going to give you my avatar, tell you a little bit about me. I'm going to teach you the foundation of networking, the four ways, the only four ways you can build your business, your two sources of referrals, what's the difference between a lead and a referral, then we're going to talk about power partnering, then we're going to talk about circle prospecting versus power partnering, and then we're going to talk about the indirect sales approach. It's a lot. That right there, if I went into depth on each one of those, at the three or four day seminar, which we aren't doing right now. Before I go over this, I want you to understand that I titled this referral marketing for real estate agents. Now, as I go through, I tailored this to real estate, all the wording is for real estate. It doesn't matter the industry. The way I developed this system of networking can be plugged into virtually any industry. So don't feel like I'm ignoring you. I just, I can't tailor it for all of you. There's so many different industries on here. Uh, I can't personalize it for all of you. So just understand, just take your industry and put your words in there, okay? Avatar, avatar. Joyce is a real estate agent who dreams of becoming a high producing agent. Currently, Joyce's focus is on how to get more referrals and to make more money. Ultimately, Joyce really wants to sell more homes and have financial security. Right this minute, Joyce would be ecstatic if she could find more buyers, find more sellers, and stop cold calling. Unfortunately, Joyce still needs to figure out how to get more referrals stand out from other agents in her area and get more business without spending tons of uh, money on marketing and then the stress of cold calling and all that good stuff. Joyce is also really frustrated by the fact that her network does not send her referrals. Other agents earn more than she does. Sellers want discounts and buyers really have no clue what they want in a house. I'll also add Joyce is frustrated that she works 
way more hours than other people in her office and those people make way more money than she does. Plus, she feels she needs to get the answers to the questions before she can move forward. How can I get more referrals? How can I find more buyers and sellers? How can I double or triple my income and still work less? Take that, plug it in for your industry, and does it sound like you? If it does, I can help you. My first question is, do you have an avatar? That's my question. Here's the last part of it. Joyce is also hung up on the idea that cold calling works. Marketing for leads is the best way to sell more homes, and there's so many coaches out there she doesn't know where to turn for help. In fact, she feels like cold leads don't work well, but she needs more business to earn more money so she can reach her goals. When all is said and done, Joyce wants to be one of the most successful realtors in her office, spend more time with her family and on her hobbies while earning more and feel in control of her life and stop chasing caca leads. To help Joyce, I would invite her to check out my webinar-based training course called One Referral Away, onereferralaway.com. I can teach her how to create an ongoing referral machine without working 60 hours a week and without chasing cold leads around. I promise to show her how to build a referral-based practice. And I promise to show all of you. Again, if you don't have an avatar, foundation number one of building a referral-based practice avatar. I have very advanced software that I can work with you on to help you craft your avatar. We can do that at another time. You have to have an avatar. You have to have that before you have the next part which is elevator speech, which we'll get to here shortly. Again, if you're watching this on record, any questions you ever have, type them down below. If you have questions right now, type them in the box. A little bit about me. Again, my name is Rick Silva. I'm a former engineer with Eastman Kodak, and I was a recruiter with Cisco Systems, which is where I learned something called the indirect sales approach. You guys think real estate's hard. You think selling cars is hard. You think being a financial planner is hard. The hardest industry that I've ever seen to sell in is recruiting. Here's why. Because when you're selling a home, the buyer has a decision, but the home does not. When you're doing staffing, the candidate has an opinion if they want to work there or not, and a hiring manager. So you're dealing with both sides who have opinions. When you're selling a car, the car doesn't have an opinion. You just have to work on one side. In staffing, you have to work on both sides. So I was able to take my skills uh, much higher, at, thank God, at a younger age. And I learned how to be really successful at networking. So that helped me at, at sales in staffing, and that helped me a lot. And working for Cisco Systems helped a lot too. For the last 17 years, I've been running networking groups. I have two courses on networking. I'm a networking coach, and I help my wife with her land banking business. I've brought in about 75% of the business, and I'll, I'll show you the numbers here shortly. I was bankrupt and homeless in 2008. I got divorced in February of 2008 as the real estate market crashed. Had to give my house to my ex-wife. I lived in my office for six months. I was homeless. I showered at the gym. I've had over 6,000 one-on-one coffee meetings and I've facilitated probably this point about 1,200 networking groups. I live, eat, breathe, sleep networking for the last 17 years. The last 10 years have been helping my wife with her land investing business. But all of that is still in the networking world and then doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sales in real estate, hundreds of sales. So that was me, broke 2008, didn't have any money. That's not a car like it. That's the exact Cadillac DeVille that got repossessed. That's the Pleasanton Hotel, downtown Pleasanton. If you know the Pleasanton Hotel, downtown Pleasanton, that was my office. It had closets. I put my clothes in the, in the closets, put everything else I owned in storage. Slept on that futon for six months, showered at the gym, homeless, at the peak of my career. So, hey, if I can do it, you can do it. I shared the stage with Les Brown when I was broke. I knew this stuff worked. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And then 10 years ago, I met Marcella. <clears throat> I slowed down all my coaching, all my training. I cut my groups back to do one thing. There's a lot of coaches out there, guys, who are teaching you how to build your business. They don't make any money. They've never done what you do. They went to a class, read a couple books. All of a sudden they said, I'm a coach because I want to be. I live, eat, breathe this stuff. And I go, I know it works. I know it works. I'm homeless. I meet Marcella. I turned everything off for eight years for one reason. To teach Marcella everything I knew, to use it for myself, and to become a multi, multi-millionaire. And I did it. And now I'm turning the coaching back on because I can. And because that business brings in 
well over $700,000 a year working 15 hours a week. So I have time on board. So I'm turning the coaching back on, turning the teaching back on for you because I know it works. And there's a lot of people out there teaching stuff that does not work. So that's us in Tahiti. We've traveled around the world nine times. That's us in Santorini. So in the last nine years, we've done over 650 real estate transactions. Now the first four years working 60 to 80 hours a week. And then it went down to 50, then it went down to 40, and now it's less than 20. It's unbelievable. The life you can lead when every other day, once or twice a week, once a month, 10 times a month, the phone rings. I just got off the phone with my CPA. He told me, you're the person to talk to about buying a home. I just got off the phone with my mortgage lender. They said, you're the person to talk to. I just got off the phone with my financial planner, my banker. They said, you're the person to talk to about real estate. When you have that built, no cold calling, no lead generating, all that other stuff, which we're going to go deeper into. I want that life for you, and I can give it to you. Here we go. There were a few people on this list who said, I know everything about networking. I just want to see if there's maybe one or two things you could teach me. I like that. So you're making a million dollars a year. You're working 10 hours a week. Whoever wrote that. If not, maybe there's a chance, maybe slight chance you don't know everything there is about networking. My broke mentor makes a million dollars a month. And he taught me this. I sat down with him and he said, when you walk in my office, you're going to take that 10 gallon ego hat off. And he goes, hanging on the coat rack by the door. If you can do that and listen to what I tell you, I can make you rich. If you don't, you're not going to get rich. So I'm asking you, no matter how much you think, whether you're watching this live or unrecorded, no matter how much you think you know about networking, let me assure you this. I'm looking at the list of people who are on here. I probably do not have a higher IQ than anybody on this list. There's people on here that I know for a fact, 130, 140 IQs. I'm in nowhere near in that league. One thing, I was put on this earth to network. But what I'm asking you to do is, yes, you're smarter than me. But for the next hour, hour and a half, two hours, take the ego hat off, hang it by the door, take all the stuff that you think you know and just remove it and become a blank slate and let me get to you. Let me get, you took this time to be here celebrating my birthday with me. I'm giving you my present. Just be with me. That's all I ask. Just be with me. So foundation, the foundation of networking without the proper mentality and the proper mindset and following the proper laws that govern networking, we can't possibly hope to build a referral-based practice. We have this beautiful frame going up and as soon as the wind blows, it's going to fall if we don't have a really, really, really good foundation. And we need a good foundation to have that. We don't have a good foundation. This is what happens. Yikes! You see other people making wherever you are financially 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800 thousand dollars a year, and you go, "I'm smarter than that guy. How's he doing it? I work harder than that guy. How's he doing it? You might work harder, but maybe you don't work smarter." I sat with a guy who had an MBA from Harvard and another advanced degree from Stanford, and he's sitting next to me, and he goes. He goes, I know I'm smarter than you. I have way more degrees than you. How do you make in a month what I make in a year? Because they don't teach networking in school. What I'm going to teach you today, you are not going to learn in school. So step one to building a referral-based practice, remember, this is the blueprint. I'm going to lay out the entire blueprint of what a referral-based practice looks like. You've got to learn the laws. Now, I'm not going deep on any of these laws. That's all built into the course. I, I'm not going super deep on anything today. But the six laws, law of reciprocity, law of attraction, law of mutual exchange, the law of increasing returns, the law of abundance, and Parkinson's law. Break one of the laws. I can't help you. There are times when you need to break the law, and one of them is when you're in an airplane, you damn sure better be breaking the law of gravity. But in this screen, you cannot break these laws. Break any of these laws, you cannot build a referral-based practice. Number two is we got to do it, and we got to do it, and we got to do it, and we don't know when the referrals are going to come. I can't tell you when the referrals are going to come, but I can tell you if you do it right, they are going to come. So if we're going to drive across the country, we can take Highway 40 or we can take Highway 80. When we look at that distance, that 3,000 miles, that's like really overwhelming because maybe San Francisco is you at zero because I know there's some people on this webinar today who are just beginners and some of you watching this recording, you're just beginners. You don't have any referrals. You don't even know anybody. Maybe you're in a new town. And we got to get over to New York and that's you making a half a million dollars a year working 20, 25 hours a week with two or three people working for you. That is like, whoa, overwhelming. If we can just get to the end of that road, 
And then when we get to the end of the road, we learn a new skill, and it takes us farther down the road. And then we learn a new skill, it takes us farther down the road. And when we're done, we're in New York. I can't tell you how long that's going to take, but I can tell you that networking, you can call it farming, like people farm areas with their, their postcards and stuff. Networking is farming. It's, uh, when I first started with Marcella, she was doing 20, 30 coffee meetings a week, and nothing was coming in for like four or five months. I said, you've got to have the faith. You've got to plant the seeds, plant the seeds, plant the seeds, plant, 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 plant. And then one day you're going to stop, and you're going to turn around, and that. You're going to start getting phone calls, and then that's going to happen. And you're going to start getting more phone calls and better phone calls. And then you're going to start making sales. And you're going to start getting referrals. And you're going to start making money. And there's a guy on this webinar, and I can't even use this exact word, but it's Brad and Brad smiling. Brad sent me an email, and I don't have it up on the screen. He said, oh, he said, holy SH, you know what? This stuff really works. Damn right it works. You have got to have faith. You've got to understand the laws, and you cannot be doing networking to make sales you got to be doing networking to help people the sales come from the helping okay so foundationally you got to have the laws and you got to have an unbelievably good elevator pitch and that's part of the course also I have multiple video trainings on how to create a proper elevator pitch this is my friend Andy Andy went to Andy has an MBA from Cornell and a bachelor's degree from I don't know where but Andy and he could run circles around me mentally, but like I told you before, they don't teach this stuff in school. I've been working with Rick about a year on how to go about networking. He totally overhauled the way I do my elevator pitch and taught me how to become more effective out in the business community. Directly from the coaching I've gotten from Rick, I now have over $6,000 a month in reincurring business. Thank you for the testimonial, Andy. Know the job of a networker. This is your job as a professional networker. Do not ever, it sounds crazy, you're all here to get referrals and make more money. I got it. My goal is to help you make more money, get more referrals, and live the life you want. Do not look for clients ever, ever. Don't door knock for clients. Don't run ads. This is my opinion. Do whatever you want. I, I should back up. I don't want to tell you what to do. I don't run Facebook ads. I don't lead generate. I don't cold call. I don't door knock. I don't send out postcards ever. I don't ever look for clients ever. I find the people who already have my clients, I teach them how to send me business. Sounds easy. Took me a long time to figure it out. So I want you to ask your question, what percentage of your business comes from leads? And then what percentage of your business comes from past clients or referral partners? What would your business look like if all your sales came from the second line, which is a past clients and referrals and power partners? No cold calling, no lead generating, no chasing people around. What would your life look like if you were not looking for business? I know what it would look like. Only four, only four, only four ways to build your business. I don't care what you're doing. We got business coaches on here that work with multi-million dollar companies. One of them just made a comment to me. That's one guy on the web that I know is way more successful than me. And I cannot fathom the guy who just typed that to me, and you know who you are, is going to be at, 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 at 62 or 63 years old starting a business cold calling. The guy's a multimillionaire in cold calling. The most successful people in your industry, and I don't care what industry you're in, they, they ain't cold calling. They're not. Find any real estate coach, they're not cold calling. Business is coming to them at a pace they can't even handle. Now, whatever you're doing for your business falls under one of these four categories, no matter what it is. You're either cold calling, you're advertising, word of mouth and networking. I used to be unbelievably talented at cold calling. Back when I was a recruiter, thousands and thousands of cold calls. Um, advertising costs money and generates leads, not a fan. Um, word of mouth is you did something before, you just got into real estate, and you got to tell everybody you know. That's word of mouth. Now, networking is talking to strangers and trying to build a reciprocal relationship with a stranger. Okay, So cold calling is banging the phone, door knocking. Hey, I'm a local real estate agent. Are you looking to buy or sell a home in the next 60 to 90 days? Ah, I'm going to give you scripting today. It's going to blow that out of the water. That is 1955 stuff. Advertising is Facebook, postcards, LinkedIn, buying leads, setting up your auto dialers, anything at all. I want you to remember this. When you advertise, you are commoditized. I'm in uh, a couple real estate groups that have hundreds of thousands of members, and their biggest complaints 
hey, I'm, I'm, I showed this person 50 homes, and right before they were going to sign the contract, they said, hey, I'll buy the home if you agree to give me 25% of your commission. Uh, I did all this research. I set up the appointment. I went to meet the person that didn't show up. I can't get people to call me back. And every single time when I asked them how they found the person was a Facebook ad, a lead, because you're commoditized, they're going with the cheapest. They are definitely not going with the best. Word of mouth, again, is talking to strangers. Word of mouth is talking to people you know. Networking is talking to strangers. That's my specialty. So, all right. So we have leads or referrals coming in from these four actions. You're going to pre-screen them. Now, I've seen in these real estate groups, people go, I, I, I got a client. I've showed them 130 homes. I just can't get the guy to commit. What do I do? What do I freaking fire them? Are you crazy? Show them 10 homes. If, you, if they don't buy after 10 homes, next. And people go, you're stupid. Why would you do that? Why would you ever fire a client? Because of the 80-20 principle. 80% 80 of your money is made by the top 20% of your clients. 80% of your time is wasted by the bottom 20%. But, well, I just fired my first client. How do, you, how do you handle that? I fire people every day. When you have referrals coming in, you can get unbelievably picky. If you have a client, when you wake up in the morning, you go, fire them. And if you don't want to fire them, you just mentally, you can't fire them. It's because you do not have enough business. Get to the point in your life where you love firing people. And if you're in a generous mood, the people you fire, send them to all your competitors. Let them deal with it. Then we're going to make some sales. And then we're going to turn some, if not all, of the people you've sold to into your referral source. We're going to make them part of your non-commissioned, non-salaried sales force. Now, in the One Referral Away course, which I'll mention once in a while here, I've got an entire half an hour to an hour on how to turn a cold call into a warm call. My specialty are three things, word of mouth, networking, and then turning people you meet into your referral sources. That's my specialty. Now, you have two sources of referrals. I'm going to pull this up here. On the left-hand side, you have past, current, and future clients who can send you referrals. And on the other side, we have power partners. Now, on the left side, based on all the questions I got sent, I know some of you are new. There might be some people uh, watching this webinar today, uh, might be watching it on recording, and you might be new. You go, Rick, I don't have any clients. Perfect. Rick, I'm new in an area. Perfect. Rick, I don't know anybody. Perfect. In six months, I'll make you the best known person in your industry, in your town. I don't care where you live. I can do it in six months. If I went to any one of your towns, wherever you live, and I don't care where you live, in six months, I'll be better known than you, and I will not advertise. I will not lead generate. I will do it via networking. I may not be the smartest guy in the room, but I might be the hardest worker, and definitely uh, when you use networking, networking is the leverage. They said you could move the earth if you had a big enough bar and a large enough stone to pull on. It's leverage. Networking is leverage. There's no networking and lead generating. Power partners, we'll get into the definition if you've never heard the term. I'm, you're going to know the term after today. So let's talk about selling, marketing, and networking because also I've talked to thousands and thousands of people and leads and referrals are understand, uh, misunderstood like you can't believe and then selling, marketing, and networking is completely misunderstood. So I wanna, I'm going to clear it up for you. Selling first and foremost is a transaction between the seller and prospective buyer or buyers. Selling is art of persuading the consumer that buying the product or service will benefit him or her. Selling is a process by which one person guides other people's behavior along a path in a desired direction, culminating in the purchase of a product or service. Let me grab one of my fancy pens here. Short, short description. Selling. Somebody signs on the dotted line. That's selling. That's all selling is. So we I'm a sales coach, right? So you teach me about a close and all that, but... Uh, you need a you need a, a lead leads and marketing coach. You need a referral coach. There's a lot of different things you need. Very few people can do it all in one. The people who say they're a real estate coach, there's no way they there's no way they're excellent at all of these things. It's impossible. Marketing an organizational function and a set of processes for creating, communicating, and delivering value to customers. The ongoing process of moving people closer to making a decision to purchase or use your product or services. If it doesn't facilitate a sale, then it's not marketing. Now, marketing is for leads, is for knocking down the barriers, for building trust and confidence. That's where you go into testimonials. You have a website, and it shows before and after pictures. Like if you were a weight loss consultant, and you had people who were heavy, and then they were thin. You have people 
needing a home and then you have standing in front of them holding keys. And I've told you I've made millions and millions and millions of dollars doing this and I was homeless 10 years ago. It's building credibility, getting people to trust, rapport, and lead generating. That's what marketing is for, driving them down a road to get closer to the sale. There's no such thing as referral marketing, and I know it's in the title because a lot of people study it, a lot of people research it, and it's a very highly searched term on the Internet. There is no such thing as referral marketing. They don't exist in the same sentence. I said it to get people to watch this, but I'm telling you, there's nothing that referral and marketing have to do. Referrals, marketing is for leads. They don't exist in the same conversation. So I feel networking is through the law of reciprocity and five other laws, a system in which you help others reach their personal and professional goals, knowing that in return you'll be helped in reaching yours. Rick Silva, Zig Ziglar, for those of you who follow Zig Ziglar, you can have enough. Well, let's not deal with the accent. You can have anything you want in life if you just help enough other people get what they want. You can have anything you want in life if you help another uh, enough other people get what they want. It doesn't say you can have everything in life if every person you walk up to you go, hey, you want to buy a home? You, 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 you know anybody looking to buy or sell a home in the next 30 to 60 to 90 days? I'm your local real estate. What can I do to earn your business? Blah. That's sales. That's caca. What networking is not is calling someone on the phone and saying, hey, how can I help you? What can I do to earn your business? That's marketing. You're never going to build a referral-based practice, full referral-based practice doing that stuff. Your responses from the survey, your favorite way to generate referrals. So I did a post, and this is what I got. My, my favorite way to generate referrals, I ask. I lead generate. I have a credit repair platform, and that's how I get people. I talk to past clients and family members. Past clients, I ask. So the first one, when you ask, leads, lead generating leads. I use a credit repair platform and they come in, leads. I talk to past clients of family members, leads. Past clients, leads. Simply ask, leads. None of that, the way it's worded, will, will get you a referral. It's going to get you a name and number, but that's not a referral. That's a lead. And, and a, a, there's no warm lead, hot lead. No. It's a lead or it's a qualified referral. I don't have levels of temperature. It's a lead. It's a referral, completely separate conversation. All right, so on the left-hand side, a lead is the name and number of someone who might look, be looking for a home. A lead is, hey, I saw your ad and I want to know how much XYZ was. A lead is, hey, I saw your Facebook ad. A lead is, I saw your LinkedIn post. A lead is, I saw uh, a sign or something on the side of your car. A lead does not know who you are. Now, before I go any farther, I want to explain to you, just back up, I probably should have said this at the beginning, take a deep breath. The reason why I don't believe in lead generating for the four core, for the four core industries, real estate, mortgage, financial planner, insurance agents, and attorneys. Attorneys can't advertise. You, 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 you get disbarred. Dentists, attorneys can't advertise. Well, you, you can do some, but you've got to be very, very, very careful. The reason why most of those industries should not lead generate is because the length of the time the appointment takes. In real estate, you're spending just the listing appointment is hours. Just to get people to call you back and chase them, it's hours and hours and hours. Imagine if people were calling you on the phone and you had an entire form filled out on the person or somebody sent, somebody called you on the phone, I got a guy, he's ready to go, and that person fills out a form for you. Everything about that person, you know everything. You're going in, it's already 90% done. So when you have those two or three hour meetings, it's 90% done. As opposed to when you're working with leads, the appointment is so damn long, they don't know who you are, they don't trust you, they got all these barriers up. The number one reason that I don't like leads is because it takes to dang long to get them to trust you and to close it, and they're wishy-washy. A referral on the right-hand side came from a trusted advisor like an attorney or a CPA, financial advisor, real estate and mortgage lender, somebody who already knows that person's exact situation and then they send them to you, has a prospect profile filled out. I'll show you my prospect profile today. When you get somebody calling you on the phone and says, I have a client ready to go, here's their information, it gives you, I'll spend a half an hour to an hour on Facebook and LinkedIn before I ever call the person. Most people... Get a little, yeah, I got a lead. Oh, let me call him on the phone. Blah, 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 blah. 
spend an hour and a half on the phone, you find that you can't even help the guy. He lives too far away. He's looking for a $10 million home. He's looking for a $60,000 dog house. Whatever it is, you spent all this time. They weren't pre-qualified. You weren't prepared. The people who get a lead and call them on the phone, that's called lack of abundance mentality. When you have an abundance mentality, you don't chase people. They chase you. They have been instructed by their advisor that you're the person they should work with. Hey, my CPA told me to call you so you can help me sell my home. That's a lot better than uh, somebody saw a Facebook ad. I'm not going to go over all of this. You guys can look at it in the recording. Leads leave the quickest, but also you will make quicker sales cold calling and advertising. You will absolutely make quicker sales. You will also always be spending money and you'll always be looking for sales when you're lead generating. They ask for discounts. They want some of your commission. When you advertise, you're commoditized. They only care about price. You've got to work a lot harder and then you're spending how many thousands a month. I've seen people in these real estate groups spending anywhere from 500 to 5,000 a month lead generating. Huh? What? On the right-hand side, referrals, they leave much slower. It absolutely takes longer to build your business. So what's the negative to building referral-based practices that takes longer? But you and I start today as a fresh real estate agent. The first year, you will make more sales than me. By the third year, I'm going to be like this. Hi, it's Rick. Hey, Rick, I just met with my financial planner, and he said it's time to buy a home. Awesome. That's going to be my life every week, and you're still going to be knocking on doors in the snow. <laughs> Hi, I'm the local real estate agent. Or you're going to be cold calling, getting all fired up, looking at the mirror, buying all this software. Good luck. When people are referred to you, they almost never ask for a discount. Almost never. Way easier to close and then way, way, way less objections. The main reason is because of the length of the time the appointments take, the show up rate, it's very, very rare. Very rare that you're going to get stood up when I teach you passive pressure. I teach you passive pressure. The amount of times you're going to get stood up, very rare. Leads are a great way when selling low ticket. Now, I'm going to sell you today, if you want to invest in it, a low ticket item. It's a networking course and some coaching. You want to buy it? Cool. If you don't, cool. But I can do it in an hour and a half to thousands and thousands of people. When you're selling a home, it's one-on-one, -on -one, belly to belly, or as Tammy type, Tammy type, tummy to tummy, I like that too, belly to belly. That sales process in freaking real estate takes so doggone long. If it's with referrals, if you're gonna spend three, four, five, six, seven hours on the last minute, hey, can I have a discount? Oh, I need to cancel the contract. My, I found out my brother-in-law is getting a real estate license. I don't wanna work with you. I see it every day in these real estate groups. It's much easier to build a business with people chasing you. Now, we're going to be shifting gears. I got ADD, baby. I can't stay on one topic all day. We're now going to jump from the foundation of leads and referrals and marketing, all that stuff, because I use the term power partner because that's the term in networking. There's Tom Ferry, Mike Ferry, Buffini, all these guys who say referral marketing, who say you know, SOI, COI. Guys, I'm telling you, all the guys I named, experts in the world they don't know a lot about networking in fact very little this much very little okay i'm going to prove that to you today if you're following them most of them say hey just call people on the phone and ask them for referrals hey go door knock hey premise that's not referrals so in my world and hopefully it's going to become in your world it's called a POI, which is a person of influence, a COI center of influence, or circle of influence, or sphere of influence. In the business, like when I work for Cisco, it's B2B. So those of you know I run networking groups called B2B Gathering. It's called business to business. I used to do staffing for the biz dev, where their job at Cisco was to either partner with other companies and plug their services into this company, like a, like a, a networking company with, with routers, perfect match. Uh, Hershey's Chocolate makes chocolate. They partner with a pretzel company, and then they put chocolate on the pretzels. We take this market and plug it into this market, and then we got a new market. 
in that's called biz dev in the world of networking it's called power partner that's the only term I'm going to use all those other terms you can use them but in the networking world it's called power partner so please understand that for this training it's called power partner here's a lady double my IQ that's Cynthia Stevenson uh, master's degree uh, bachelor's degree doctor MD way smarter than me Rick is amazing He's very professional. His direct button-down approach is concise, efficient, and effective. I was able to learn new speaking skills in a very short period that has translated to grow three times my goal and twice the profitability that I projected in my business plan now just four months into my new business. So networking can be pretty fast. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a seven-figure earner who has a way higher IQ than me. They don't teach this stuff when you become a doctor. You become a doctor when you get out. Go get them, kid, with what skills? Then you spend 10, 20, 30,000 a month on advertising. And um, somebody just, somebody typed in, and I don't, hey, Paul, that 10,000 on Zillow, is that 10,000 a week, a month, a year? I bet it's a month. 10,000 on Zillow. Now, if it's making a return, that's awesome, but you've got to have a giant 10,000 a month on Zillow. Now, here's the thing. If I owned a real estate company and had a bunch of real estate agents that weren't doing anything, and if I could spend that and get a return on it, I would do it in a heartbeat. But I'd also have them bring someone like me in to teach them because here's the thing. If you're going to lead generate, the way I can get you out of lead generating is I'm going to teach you when you get a lead how to not only turn them into a client, but then get referrals from, not leads, get referrals from your leads. That's why people lead generate constantly and they can't stop us because they don't know how to turn them into a referral source. I can help you do that. So uh, there's a number of people on this list and, and watching at home that, that this doesn't fall into your category, but I bet it did in the beginning. And I hopefully, um, if you're if this is your life, then I'm going to hopefully flip it on its ear and get it to do this. What I would like to see is that you're almost never cold calling. You're spending money on advertising if you want to, and business is coming to you. So that blue line is where I'd want you. And I know there's some people watching this right now who are on the left-hand side because most of the top quote-unquote real estate coaches knock on doors, send out letters, cold call, circle prospecting, blah. Good luck. If that's what you like, go do it. But the top people in your industry, sometime or another, don't do that. So your job as a professional networker, when you're talking to people, what's the current circumstance you can help them with? And I'm going to say again, this is not so you can sell to them. And I'm going to explain. So if you're in real estate, mortgage, financial planning, insurance, these things are going to fall deep into what you're doing. Are they getting divorced? Are they getting married? Are they moving away? Are they having a child? Are they inheriting money? What does the new house? Tammy's on here. Tammy was the first person, and at the time, Tammy, I'm not saying your last name only because I'm pretty sure when you sh when you actually taught me this, I had heard about it, but I had never seen anybody doing this. If Tammy wasn't the seven-figure earner at the time she showed it to me, she either became one or was one before. But I met with Tammy, and Tammy was the first person who ever, in a meeting 15 years ago, pulled out a trifold and said, when I move somebody into town, it's my responsibility to pro provide them. Let's just say you're in real estate and you sell somebody a home in, in, a, in a new town. And this is what Tammy taught me. And this is what I fully believe. I put you in Pleasanton, California. It's my duty as a professional networker and a service provider who wants to set himself apart from other real estate professionals. I should be providing you. And I'm just going to think about every circumstance. Your roofer, your gardener, your painter, your house cleaner, your hairstylist, your new optometrist, your chiropractor, your acupuncture, every single thing you need in your life, I'm providing it to you. I put you in that home. So if they're getting divorced, most real estate agents go, all right, somebody's going to move out and I get to sell them a home. That's a salesperson. You'll never build a referral-based practice with that thought process. I hear somebody getting divorced because I'm wired as a professional networker. Do you need a family law attorney? Do you need a CPA? Do you need a financial planner? Do you need a marriage and family therapist? What do you need? What do you need to help you with that divorce? Getting married. The, 
the, the salesperson goes, all right, I get to sell them a home. Oh, they both have their own homes. They're going to sell they're going to sell the two homes and move into one. That's a salesperson. Salespeople don't build referral-based practices ever. It's very hard. Not ever. Very hard. And even if you do get referrals from doing what I just said, you'll get five times more if you turn that. Turn the sales guy off and turn the networker on. I hear getting married. The Rick, the professional networker, says, do you need a photographer? This was not planned, by the way. I just thought of this. Do you need a videographer? Do you need a wedding planner? Do you need a limo driver? Where are you going to get your dress? Where are you going to get your cake? Where are you going to get the venue? Who's going to do the planning? Who's going to do the cooking? Do you need a caterer? Do you need Do you need a travel agent? If you do, call Lori McDonald. There you go, Lori. What do you need to help you with your marriage? They're moving away. Do you need a mover? Having another child. Having another child, you know that they're going to be making some changes. That one could actually, having another child could be, do you need a painter or an interior designer. Hey, I just thought of it. I had to think about that one first. Again. Oh, Tammy put nanny. Do you need a nanny? Thank you, Tammy. There's another power partner. Awesome. That's why we're on here, to learn from each other. What does the new house need? It needs an interior designer. It needs paint. It needs roofing, flooring. When you put someone in a home and then that's it, you're a salesperson. When you provide all these services, and when I met with Tammy, she opened up that, that brochure and showed me all these services. I went, so... Why have I had 6,000, over 6,000 one-on-one coffee meetings and hundreds virtually? Now, when I say one-on-one coffee, yes, in Starbucks, yes, in Pete's Coffee. Nothing, and I mean nothing, has changed because of COVID. There are still people living and breathing, and you and I are having a meeting right now. It just so happens I'm doing one to hundreds, but I do one-on-one meetings every week. Nothing is different. Nothing. Rick, what are you doing differently under COVID? Nothing. Nothing is different. All these people lead generate, you got to do, nothing is different. You just don't know how to do it. So we talk about cold calling and door knocking on the left-hand side. Now, this is my opinion, having made thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of cold calls. It's embarrassing. It's demeaning. Uh, I was in a real estate group the other day, and a, and, and a guy said, I'm going out cold. He's actually, it was yesterday, he's going out cold calling today. I was like, oh, cold call my birthday, get on my seminar. By the way, this is November 18th, 2020. If you're watching this in the future, I'm 52 years old today, and this is my birthday present no matter when you're watching it to you. He goes, it's snowing outside. What should I do? The guy got eviscerated and obliterated on there. He said, it's COVID. People were like, it's COVID. Are you crazy? You're going to go knock on doors? Are you, what are you, what are you thinking? Are you stupid? Um, that's number one. Number two, so when it's snowing outside, if you can't go out, there's your income. Um, it's embarrassing. It's demeaning. Now, insurance, financial planner, mortgage lender, CPA, real estate agent, attorney, these are some of the most highly trusted and not trusted in, in, industries on the planet. Can you imagine an attorney or a dentist or a doctor walking up and down the street, door knocking? I got news for you real estate, mortgage, financial planner, and insurance, the best make way more than attorneys and doctors. Real estate's one of the most highly paid industries on the planet, and you're going to go knock on doors. It's freaking embarrassing. But these high-level, I hate to say too much about other people. You have have Big Mike and Little Tom, who are real estate coaches. You have a guy named Brian. You got all these guys who teach who teach real estate coaching, and they say send out letters, knock on doors. It, it's embarrassing to the industry that they tell people that. You don't see dentists and doctors cold calling. And then I watch all these videos about cold calling. Okay, everybody, I'm going to do live cold calling for you. <sighs> Let's get fired up. I got my mirror. I got my software. I got geo leads. I got my my red X. I got cold calling systems. I got my mirror. I got my dialer set up. I got this. I spent $5,000 on leads. All right, guys. Let's get fired that's embarrassing. I watch these guys. I fall up my chair. It's freaking embarrassing. But the reason they teach it is because it works for them. Networking works better, but this works for them. They have a personality type where they like to sit and have people hang up the phone on them all day long. But I want you to think about dentists, doctors, and attorneys. Do you see them banging the phones all day having people hang up on them? It's a respected industry. If you want to be respected, you are not going to be knocking on doors. They're going to be like, get out of my face. Stop freaking calling me. Leave me alone. It's embarrassing to the industry. But since all the trainers teach to do it, it's all you know. And I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be all you know. I can teach you a better way. The average salesperson in almost any industry spends 15 to 35 hours looking for business. So on the right-hand side, referral-based practice, 
you want people calling you on the phone and that makes you look successful when you're sitting there at home and you get an email, you get a phone call and people are chasing you. It makes you feel a lot more important, a lot more special and in the second line you can become very, very picky. You can teach your network how to send you only the people you want to work with. Now here's the thing, you knock on doors, 100 doors and you get one or two people interested or you make Guys, I'm going to make 30,000 cold calls a year for what? But if that's what you do, then you get somebody on the phone and they're looking for a $10 million home and you specialize in uh, anything under a million. Or they're looking for a $300,000 condo and you don't work on anything less than a million. You did all that work, all that calling, all that banging the phones, all that crushing the doors and banging the doors and wearing your shoes out. And you finally get somebody interested. Wrong market, wrong, everything's wrong. You don't want to work them for whatever reason. They're flakes, whatever it is. That time wasted can be reversed. And you teach your power partners how to send you exactly what you're looking for. Exactly. So every person that calls you, every person that gets emailed to you is 95% what you're looking for. You don't have the stress. The phone rings. People want to work with you. You don't have to buy leads. And then... It's not zero time, but the average professional network spends five to 10 hours a week doing business development, not 15 to 35 hours a week crushing the phones. The big difference in time. Now, having said that, everyone should cold call because it builds a tough skin and it teaches you what you shouldn't be doing and probably what you don't like doing. Over the long haul, building a referral-based practice will help you make more money, will be more fun, We'll save you thousands of dollars. And in, in Paul's company, if, if I could get in there and teach the whole company how to re, uh, do referral-based practice, send it, save them $10,000 a month on Zillow. Hey, Paul, let's let's build that company up. And then uh, they can pay me $5,000 a month. And then they can save $5,000 a month on, on Zillow. That'd be my, that'd be awesome. Just throwing it out there. When, uh, when, when, when cold calling, you only get business when you're door knocking or on the phone. Yuck. When you have referrals coming to you, you can spend more time serving your clients. So this is the big thing going back to, to what Tammy said when Tammy said she wants to be tummy to tummy. And, and for me, I always learned it from Brian Tracy's belly to belly. If you're not, hey, I'm going to do a three-hour blitz call today, screw all that. When the phone's ringing with people, number one, you can be picky. Number one, you, two, you can fire people whenever you want. Number three, you can spend more time finding that perfect home so you're not showing 100 homes. You can spend more time servicing your clients because the only time you make money is when you're servicing your clients. You're not making money when you're pounding the phones, when you're door knocking, when you're sending out mailers. You're making money when you're working with highly qualified prospects and you're meeting with them face-to-face -face or showing homes. When you build a referral ant farm, you have other people doing the work for you. It's called leverage. Thank you for being with me this long, by the way. We've got a lot more to cover. We're going to take a little break here shortly, three-minute break, and we're going to come back. But not yet. Don't go. Hold on. Judy is on, and Judy, you were not the only one who said, I can't find the time to network. I can't find the time to do biz dev. Well, it's good and bad. If you're that busy, then awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. Now, so Judy, I'm going to use you as an example. I'm not going to say your last name. If you want to give me permission to say your last name, I will. You can type in the box. I'm going to just say Judy. So Judy is busy building up her business. And in the note she typed, it's obvious she's having a hard time having enough time to build a business. Now, one of the places you can get referrals, Judy, is from the client. They can refer friends and family members. So if we can get you better at that, you're already talking to them, number one. Number two, Judy, I know you work with builders, developers, other architects. Uh, you, you probably work with a million industries I don't know about. I don't even know. You may even talk to banks because they got to get the money from somewhere to do the, the, the buildings that you're building. So when you're talking to those people, I can teach you how to sprinkle the referral wording on them, which takes no more time out of your life. You're already talking to these people. So I'm not asking you to go out and start something from scratch. Judy, if you're busy, that tells me you have business. I'll teach you how to get business for what you already have. So hopefully that helps. I'm not asking you to, to uh, go out and do a bunch of stuff from scratch. Now, I've had people say, I don't have time to do it. And they're doing like a deal every two months and they're making, you know, 50, 80, 100 grand a year. What are you busy doing? You're not doing anything. You're selling five or 10 homes a year. I'm sorry. That's less than part time. You're not even working. So how do you not have the time to do that? I don't get it. Uh, I don't have the time. Awesome. You have 
10, 13, 15 escrows going right now. Uh, I sold a house two months ago. To me, it's lack of knowledge. It's not lack of time. So in this picture, this is the thing that I try to help people with a lot. People start getting busy. So they start doing some of the things I teach them and start to get busy. And as the business increases, they cut out all their marketing and networking efforts. And then guess what? They make the sales, the sales fall off, whatever it is, they get right here. And it's O-S-H-I, you know what, that hits the fan because now they don't have any business and O-S. So they go O-S, I got to start my networking again. Now, this is the thing we got to try to avoid because as you get busier, try to do more networking, not less. Try to do more. Because you're going to fall into the trap of, I'm doing really well. So you have a $100,000 a month, but you didn't network. So the next month you have a zero month. You didn't have a $100,000 a month. You had two $50,000 a month. Level it out. So what we want is we want the sine wave like this. Very small, very small. Uh, my wife, for the last five months, we've done 65 or 70 transactions this year. At any given time, she'll have five to 15 escrows going. She never misses one of her six networking groups. You got to find. You have to find the time. You have to squeeze it in. You have to do it smart. So we don't want this sine wave in our life. I've had three hundred thousand dollar months, and I promise you, the next month was not zero. Maybe it was fifty, eighty, a hundred thousand. But when you average it out, that's two back to back two hundred thousand dollar months. That's not bad. So I don't want you to turn it off. Now I'm going to ask you for a favor. We're we're close to the halfway point. I want to show you, we got a lot more to do, so don't leave. We're not even, we're, we're just halfway through now. If you're watching this, bear with me. We're going to take a three minute break after this and we're going to come back and I'm going to drop a whole bunch more knowledge bombs on you. If you have a browser and you want to do this, you can. The website's one referral away and that's where the course is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what you could do to get a Humongo discount, okay, and then what's included. So it's that one referral away. This is what you'll see if you go to onerefferralaway.com, okay. You click that logo, and then you're going to get a page with a whole bunch of writing on it. And then you're going to scroll down, and you're going to see this screen. And if you click this button right here where it says $7.95, and you enter your name and your email address, this screen is going to pop up. Now, if you're watching this live or on record, if you took the time to get to this point, I want to give you this discount and I want you to understand what I'm showing you. So it's 795 bucks. I'll show you everything included. When you get to this screen, you're going to see a button right here that says coupon. I want you to click that button and I want you to enter the number 200. So you click the coupon button, you enter the number 200, and it drops the price to $5.95, okay? So for $5.95, you can have the course. I'm going to go over it briefly. Again, I'll go over it at the end. I want you to know what's included. It's a lot. Where if you want me to help you build a referral-based practice. <clears throat> this is the course. I'm not going to go in uh, super uber detail. It's 12 modules. Goal setting, time management. What do you do with a referral? How do you give referrals? How do you teach people to send you referrals? If you're cold calling, how do you get people on the phone? How do you get referrals from them? How to sell with testimonials? which I've already showed you two times in this presentation, how to sell with testimonials, staying top of mind, getting tons of leads if that's what you want, what to do at virtual networking events, any kind of networking event, the wording does not change, how to get the most out of networking groups, elevator speech, going deep on selling, marketing, and networking, and learning a lot about the pipeline and then all the laws you need to know to have a successful referral-based practice. That's included. So is this. Once a month, Group coaching, those of you that are involved already and those of you that want to get involved, I'll do it around when you guys are available. Those of you that are watching the recording, I don't care if you watch this in 10 years from now, type in 200 to get the discount. It's not just for people today. And I'll do 45 minutes every single month answering any questions you have, doing everything I can to help you become more successful. Uh, access to a private Facebook group, which even is even mentioned here. There's a private Facebook group where you guys can network with each other. World-class elevator speech training. I want to explain this. You're going to watch a video. You're going to craft your elevator speech. You're going to send it to me. I'm going to work on it. I'm going to improve it. I'm going to record myself 
doing your elevator speech, and that is going to go on my YouTube channel so people can see your elevator speech on my YouTube channel. <clears throat> and then you'll have lifetime text access to me. Uh, if you have a quick question, you can text me anytime, um, and I'll, I'll answer that. So all of that's included, the group coaching, the Facebook group, the elevator speech training. Text me anytime if you have questions for 595 and show you this. A, a number of you know me from running networking groups. This is a complete digression from this training. Uh, I, I used to have 19 groups at one time that I ran by myself. I currently run six. I've been running networking groups August of 2003. So this is a screenshot of, of what used to be groups that met face to face that now meet virtually. This is what a this is what a virtual networking group looks like. So there's not a person on here that knows what I'm about to say. No matter how long you know me, you don't know what I'm about to tell you. So whether you're seeing it now or seeing it on a record, if you're interested in having your own virtual networking group and working with me on it anywhere in the United States, call me or email me. And my information will be down below the video and it'll be at the end of this training. I'm looking to help people start their own networking groups out there because trust me, there's better alternatives out there to the, the company that has three letters and the first letter is the B and the last letter is an I. B2B gathering blows them out of the water. If you want to have your own virtual networking group where I help you and I actually run your first five meetings and I help you build the group, let me know. Just email me. It's b2bgathering.com or just call me and uh, I'll help you set up your own networking group. You want to work with me on it? So we're going to kind of move around. We talked about the foundation of networking. We talked about power partnering. We, we've been bouncing around. We're going to bounce around a little bit more. The beauty of it is just watch the recording and you can listen to it all over again. We're going to back up and go just a little bit more on the foundation of networking. So I explained it's having a good foundation. It's having the laws. It's having the faith, the farmer faith and it's having a good elevator speech. So we started off with my avatar. And I, like I said, I have very advanced software that helps create the avatar. So if you get the course, I'll help you develop your avatar. From the avatar, then we create an elevator speech. That elevator speech has to have pieces of the avatar, but it also has to fire the reticular activating system, the brain stem, which I'm not going into today. If you look it up on the internet, it's called the RAS, R-A-S, called the reticular activating system. If your elevator speech doesn't fire the reticular activating system, then you don't have a really good elevator speech. So do this or get really good at cold calling and lead generating and having a whole bunch of money to pay for ads and Red X and all these different things you need to uh, need to buy and pay for. Or just meet with people and teach them how to send your referrals. I like that one a lot better. So you're going to craft an avatar. You've got to write an elevator speech. You've got to teach your past, current, and future clients how to send your referrals. You got to join networking groups. You got to follow the six laws to help you become successful networking. You have to learn the proper networking scripts, i.e., how to get people to meet you for coffee, how to show up, how to send you referrals. I can help you write all of those. Turn cold calls into warm calls. Build your power partner network all over town. You need a, tons of power partners all over the place. How to have your one on one face to face or virtual coffee meetings and then developing win-win strategies with these people. They're not just going to send you referrals because you said, hey, here's how to send me a referral. It's way deeper than that. Learn how to properly pre-screen those referrals. And then Facebook, LinkedIn, website, YouTube all should have the proper wording, the proper branding. If you want to see my, my YouTube channel, my YouTube channel is one referral away. My website's one referral away.com. My private Facebook group's one referral away. Pretty cool branding all that good stuff. Let's talk a little bit more about power partnering. A power partner is someone who sells to, serves and consults the exact same person you do. They just don't sell what you sell. We'll go deeper, but just understand <clears throat> to, build, to build your business, to make sales, I don't care what business you're in. I keep looking over here because the list is over. I'm looking at your names, but I understand the cameras here. I'm a professional network. I'm not a professional PowerPoint slide maker. I'm not a professional videographer. I'm a professional networker. I'm having fun. Hopefully you're having fun. Hopefully you're smiling. Someone who sells to, serves, and consults. Now, to build your business, to build your business, I want you to think about this. You're going to look for business, and you're going to try to make sales. And remember when we first started, I said, don't ever look for business, ever. Don't look for business. Find people who already have your client. And I don't care what you do. I'm looking at the list. I know what two-thirds of you do for a living. For instance, 
Big K is a commercial banker. <clears throat> Big K has two options. Look for business owners who need a loan and go out and knock on doors. Good luck, K, with COVID. If, if, if K's, Key Lee's only line of getting business was knocking on business owners' doors, then Big K, because whose door are you going to knock on? You're not knocking on a lot of doors right now, strictly because of COVID, but also there's not a lot of people that are traditionally at their at their office, and he just typed me correct. Big K, who's a business banker, if he only talked to business coaches, business attorneys, estate planning attorneys, financial planners, business lenders, commercial real estate agents, uh, group group health and life, payroll companies, on and on and on. If that's all he met with and taught him, taught all those people what he did for a living and vice versa, then you guys can build a reciprocal referral relationship with power partners. That's called power partnering. Okay? So you got one option. K can go knock on doors. If you're a real estate agent, you could go knock on doors. You could run Facebook ads. You could call friends. If I'm, hey, you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next 60 to 90 days? Hey, do you know anybody? No. You, if you're a real estate agent, mortgage lenders, financial planners, estate planning attorneys, relocation companies, family law attorneys, CPAs, People who have the finger on the pulse of when somebody's looking to buy or sell a home. If I'm a real estate agent, I'm also going after photographers, wedding planners, uh, event planners, uh, even uh, limo. My wife, just so you guys know, there's no secret. When, when you're making – she hates it when I talk too much about money. When you're making well over $700,000 a year working 15 hours a week, it's not luck. It's having thousands of coffee meetings. And then saying the right things in those coffee meetings and not trying to sell to everyone you meet. Again, Power Partner goes by many names. Power Partner, Collaborative Partner, COI, so whatever you want to call it. Collaborating with other people who already have your client. I'm going to say it over and over because in these real estate groups, people go, well, how much do you guys spend on lead generating? Hey, I had this client, and at the last minute, they said, they said, uh, I'll sign this paperwork if you give me 25% of your commission. Hey, I need to cancel because... Uh, my next door neighbor is a real estate agent. I'm going to go with him after you did all the work. That stuff happens, and I'll put every single time, where'd you get the business? Where'd you get the business? Where'd you get the business? How'd you find that person? Facebook lead, Facebook lead, cold calling, door knocking. Th that's why it happens. Every time I type the same thing in, if you had a referral-based practice, those things would not be happening to you. When you advertise, you're commoditized. When you door knocked, and I don't want to say it, it's, it's – I got to watch what I say because I'm being recorded. When you're door knocking, you're demeaning yourself. You're putting yourself at the lowest common denominator you possibly could. When the phone's ringing with business, you're at the top of the food chain. When you're knocking on doors, you're at the bottom. And I got a little uh, uh, explanation of that coming up. Power partners for finding customers. This is the one, the most important one. This is my mistake. The second one should have been on top. So back to Tammy and her resource guide. So Tammy put someone in a home. She gives them the financial planner the person to mow the lawn, the interior designer, the house cleaner, the chiropractor, the roofer, the hairstylist, the massage. When you put someone in a home, I want you to listen to this. Get it. Look at the second one where it says refer customers to your power partners. So if I'm a real estate agent and I'm putting someone in a home and I bring in the painter, the roofer, the handyman. I'm just looking around my house. The handyman, the painter, the roofer, the electrician, every, the plumber interior designer if i'm bringing all of these people in with me to serve my client number one i'm going to look a lot different than most real estate agents number one number two i'm going to become a trusted resource and with the proper scripting that person i put in that home is going to call me whenever they need anything they're going to call rick silva they're going to be sitting with their friends and family members and they go oh you know i'm thinking about maybe i need to wow who did who did that paint? Who who did your add-on? You know what? My real estate agent, anything I need, I just call Rick. He knows everyone in town. And they go, could I get his number? So when you refer your clients to your power partners, are you making any money from that? Zero. But are you not giving business to other people? And if you give them the proper wording and you give them the proper scripting, is it possible that a painter, an interior designer, a carpet cleaner, an electrician, a pool cleaner, a roofer, is it possible that sometime in the world, I want you to, if you say no to this, then I want you to leave the webinar. Is it possible that one time in the history of the world, 
that a carpet cleaner, a handyman, a roofer, a general contractor has ever heard, hey, we're bringing you in, we're going to fix up the house, we're going to clean it up, and then we're going to sell it. It happens a million times a day. If you taught those power partners how to send you business, they're going to go, oh, we're going to do this work, and, and, uh, and then you're going to sell it? Hold on. Let me go to my car. They run out to the car, and guess what they bring back in? And one of the ways you teach them how to do it is with word-for-word -word quotes. So we're going to digress just for a second. In the back of my card, this is my land investing card, it says, a great referral for me is a friend or family member of yours who says, or client who says, I want to diversify my portfolio. The only way my 401k goes up is when I put money into it. I'm sick of tenants, toilets, termites, troubles, and taxes. The stock market's too volatile. My investments are stressing me out. I need to do a 1031 exchange. I can't put enough money away for retirement. If you hear any of those things, that would be an unbelievable introduction to me for my land banking business. Now, if you took a script like that and you taught all of those power partners, and every time you sold a home or walked in a home, you referred them to paint or the roof or the handyman, the financial plan or the mortgage lender, anything they need, you're immediately set apart from 95% all, uh, of all real estate agents anywhere. That's what sets you apart. That's how you build a referral-based practice. So the job of a networker is the power partner, to receive customers from power partners, to refer non-customers. You're not even going to work with the person. You can't help them. But <clears throat> you meet with somebody, and they find out that they all they have to do is put in an ADU in the backyard, or they're going to blow the wall out and add a room. Well, now you're not going to sell them a home. The salesperson goes, bummer, and they leave. No. The professional networker says, do you need the architect? Do you need a builder? Do you need a planner? Do you need a painter? Do you need a handyman? What do you need? You bring those services in to serve a non-customer, which is number four on the list. Refer non-customers to power partners because you're still helping your power partners. The more you help them and the more you program their reticular activating system with those quotes I read you, the more you program their mind, the more top of mind you become. As opposed to, hey, you're looking to buy or sell in the next 60 to 90, well, maybe in a year. Well, I'm a local real estate agent. What can I do to earn your business? There's a guy out there with the same name as mine, Ricky, and he teaches that scripting. And it's, his philosophy is good where he says, I'm here to service the client. But unfortunately, all the scripting is servicing them with selling them a home. And that's a salesperson. You're not going to build a referral-based practice when your only desire is to sell them a home. Your stronger desire has to be, who do I know that can help them? Who do I know that can help them? Who do I know who can help them? When you have that then you're going to be building a referral-based practice. <clears throat> attain, attain clients at the lowest cost, find better and higher paying, paying clients. It gives you more time to serve your clients. That's one of the big keys, too. You can use power partners to get to the person you need to talk to. You can get to other power partners, and you can give and receive referrals. It allows you to spend more time servicing your clients, and I keep saying that over and over because when you're cold calling, it wears you out. You make 100 calls. Good luck after you made 100 cold calls sitting there and pulling up a web browser and doing the research you need for your client. You're going to be so freaking fried, and then it's going to fry you out, and you're not going to do it for another week because it freaks you out or somebody said to F off or whatever. You don't do it for a week. Your business is being destroyed because you're not doing biz dev because you don't like it. The goal is to find a solution to a problem, whether you can solve it or someone else can, provide the information uh, or help in locating the right person who can help them. That's a professional networker. That's why there's people on here who don't even need my help. I see who is on here. There's people on here that are very successful. Maybe they're picking up a couple nuggets. Maybe, maybe even they're picking up 100 nuggets. But there are people on here who make a crap ton of money because they're wired this way. But where I can still help you is if you're wired this way to be a helpful person, it's in the wording that very few people teach, which is what puts you over the top. No matter how much you're making, this can 10% up to three times your income when you have the right words. It's the wording. So power partnering is the single most important concept you must master in order to build a referral-based practice. <clears throat> now we're going we're gonna, to... We're going to jump a little bit, and we're going to actually go back to Power Partner. Now, I, I had this sticky note, and if you're in, you know, certain networking groups, hey, I got a tip for you. Hey, I got a lead for you. And then the amateur, the person who's desperate, the person who chases, or the person who just doesn't know how to network, that person calls the person on the phone. Brad is on here. So Brad was my coach 
off and on for like 15 years, and now I get to be Brad's uh, mentor and coach. And Brad used to do a lot of the get the lead, call him on the phone stuff. And when I showed him this, he's the one that sent me the email saying, holy SHI, you know what, this stuff really works. So here's the type of things you need to do to get out of the chase mode and get out of the be chased mode. Number one, when you get a lead or referral, I mean, when you get a lead, don't call them. In the military, they'll send out the special forces or they'll send out um, recon. You guys have all heard of recon. Everybody's seen a war movie or they'll send out snipers. And what they're doing is they're trying to figure out where the bad guy is and how to best attack with the with the highest percentage of um, success, not failure, because it's life and death. Well, business isn't life and death, but if you can't pay your bills, it kind of is. So I take the same tactic that snipers do and that recon does in the military, and I want to do a whole lot of research. So this is what I do. Somebody gives me somebody gives me a name and number. The last thing I do is call that the the lead on the phone. This is the absolute least that I will take before I call someone. Rick, if you give a if you get a lead, you don't call them. Yep, uh, is that costing you money? Are you stupid? Nope, because if I call a lead and I'm not prepared, I could spend a lot of time with them, and then they could leave me at the last minute, and I got too many hours involved. My time is way too valuable for that. So this is the least. If you guys ever want to send me someone who might want to invest in land or join one of my networking groups, this is the least. I'd like their name, their company name, what do they do. I could spend about four hours going over this, uh, why I need some of this information, and just this is this is just the information. What I do with it is a whole nother training. I'd like to get their contact information because ultimately I will contact them if they have a website. Uh, what city do they live in? Because like you know, we got a ton of real estate agents watching this. If the person lives in Oregon and you live in California, then if you would have called them on the phone and found that out you're caught off guard a little bit. I do all that research up front, and then when I made contact, I would already have a real estate agent in Oregon waiting to talk to that person, and I'm obviously still going to get an overwrite on it. I want to know their situation. I want to know where they live. I want to know where they work, uh, what they do. What did you tell them about me? What do they know so far? Well, I, I told them your wife uh, helps people diversify old 401ks and and old uh, and maybe real estate they don't want anymore into land and high growth areas. Awesome. What else did you tell them? What did they say? They said, oh, uh, what I want to know. Oh, they said, oh my God, that sounds cool. I want to know everything. And then I'm going to go, I'll just tell you now, I'm going to go on LinkedIn and I'm going to go on Facebook and I'm going to do research and I'm going to find out everything I can about that. I'm going to go to LinkedIn. Now, a lot of people who invest with my wife and I use old 401ks. So if I look them up on LinkedIn and they're a, uh, software engineer that have had five jobs, there's a chance they have five old 401ks. So I'm going to kind of, my conversation is going to be based on what I see. Where'd they go to college? Maybe I did, when I was doing staffing, I met people or where they used to work. I, I met with a guy who worked at Cisco Systems and he worked at um, Extreme Networks. Now, when I was a recruiter, I did staffing for Extreme Networks and I worked at Cisco Systems. So when I met with him, this is what I did not do. <clears throat> hey, Mr. Anderson. I went on LinkedIn and I noticed that you worked at Cisco and now you work at, uh, it was Juniper Networks. Now you work at Juniper Network. I did staffing for them too. I didn't do that because it, then that, that, it looks like I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a stalker. So when I sat down with Mr. Anderson at a Starbucks in Castro Valley, California, seven or eight years ago, when it was my turn to say who I was, my name is Rick Silva. I teach networking. And, you know, before I, I was a recruiter with, uh, I did some recruiting with Juniper Networks, and I used to work at Cisco Systems, and I didn't look at them. I just said I used to do this, and then as soon as I did, he goes, he goes, I used to work at Cisco. What department were you in? I worked in the MSSBU, Building 10, right across the street from the CEO of Cisco. I cur and I work at Juniper. So you did staffing for Cisco and Juniper? The guy went from like this when we first met. Here's two salespeople trying to sell me this stuff. As soon as I said I worked at Cisco and did staffing for Juniper, the guy, all the weight was off. All the weight was off. Knock down the barriers. If the last three minutes, if you listen to the story and you understand why I get this information so I can do recon, so I can have better rapport when I meet with them, if those three minutes is all you got out of this, go get them because that's about the most important thing I can teach you. You have got to do the recon. When you're knocking on someone's door, how are you going to build trust and rapport without basically – getting on your hands and knees and trying to oversell yourself when all I had to do was go on LinkedIn. I looked at the guy 
And I said, I used to work at Cisco and I did staffing for Juniper. As soon as I said that, the guy went from this to, because I did my research. 100% correct. Where I put my sticky note? 100% correct. Rick, you get a lead and you don't call them? You're damn right I don't call them. No way. I do tons of research and then I reach out. Hopefully this is helping you. So I ask myself questions. Who do I know that can help this person on and on? I've covered a lot of this. It's, it's what you do to help them, your clients, and also when you're meeting your power partners. These questions are for power partners and clients. How can I set myself apart if I'm a real estate agent and I want to get in with a mortgage lender? Because a lot of real estate agents go, every mortgage lender knows 500 real estate agents. None of them are doing this. And I'm going to show you a picture of what I mean. I'm going to give it to you visually here shortly. How to introduce people. This is the two-hour seminar. You can do three-way introductions, arranged lunches. You can't have uh, parties at your home, but you doggone sure can have uh, virtual parties. There's a lot of ways. It's all covered in the course. How to improve your cold calling. I'm going to give you the, the, the short scripting. The amateur goes, hey, my name is Rick Silva. Knock on, knock on. Hey, my name is Rick Silva, local real estate agent. Are you looking to buy or sell a home in the next 60 to 90 days? Nope. Click. Hey, my name is Rick Silva. I'm a local real estate agent. Just check to see if you're interested in buying or selling a home in the next 60 to 90 days. Uh, maybe maybe down the road. But, oh, that's, that's fine. Do you know anybody looking to buy or sell in the next 60 to 90 days? Uh, yeah, my next door neighbor, whatever. And then you get a name and then you call them and then you're down the road of cold calling failure. The indirect sales approach. So when you knock on a door and you say, hey, my name is Rick Silva, local real estate agent. got a house for sale down the road. Just wanted to come by and tell you about it. Hey, are you looking at What can I do for you? How can I help you? How can I serve you? The guy who teaches that, that wording, when you say, how can I serve you? Or I'd love to be able to earn your business when you're ready to go. That's a sales guy. That's still going back to lowest on the totem pole. Low, low, low on the totem pole. You go do that and build your business that way. And you get somebody who who you knock on the door and you go, what can I do to build your business? And I build a relationship. Listen very closely. That same guy, you knocked on his door and he said, yeah, maybe down the road I could use you. Give me your card. And then he has your card. I'd love to do anything I had to earn your business. That same client, I network with his financial planner. And I teach him, hey, if you have a client that says, I have a bonus check coming in. I'm looking to do a 1031. I'm thinking about relocating. I teach that guy's financial planner how to send me referrals, you're going to get a phone call. Hey, I know you came by and I know you gave me my card, but I'm going with somebody else. Guess who they're going with? This guy. Because I got in with his trusted advisor. I'm going to beat you every single time. You will never beat me cold calling. The indirect sales approach. Now, when you, when you, when you door knock and cold call and say, hey, Rick, so blah, 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 the answer is yes or no. I'm going to teach you how to have three things coming from a cold call. I'm not going to go super deep today. It's all in the course. You're going to get a yes, you're going to get a no, or you're going to get a name and number, and then you're going to teach them how to do it more. Knock on your door. You answer the door. Hey, my name is Rick Silva, local real estate agent. I'm sure you're thrilled with the home you live in. Just wondering, have you had a friend or family member or maybe, maybe a coworker lately who you've heard say, I'm thinking about moving. I got another kid on the way. I'm getting divorced. Hey, my, my company's slowing down. Uh, I need a downsize. Hey, uh, my last kid just left for college. I'm an empty nester. I'm going to downsize. I'm going to hit him with quote after quote after quote after quote. Programming the reticular activating system. And they're going to go, you know what? I, I got somebody you should talk to. And then I'm going to get the name and number and I'm going to have them fill out a referral form. Or they're going to say, that actually sounds like me. Maybe we should talk. Or they're going to say, no one slammed the door in your face. It's still going to happen. But with the indirect sales approach, where you're truly trying to help them and help other people, you're going to get names and numbers as opposed to, hey, you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next 60, 90 days. I'd love to earn your business. What can I do to, what can I do to help you? Well, the wording is, it's not what I can do to help you. What can I do to be the guy to help you buy or sell your next home? That's a sales guy. People don't like salespeople. They like networkers. One of the other major advantages being highly networked is more referrals coming to you without effort so you can spend more time serving your clients. I'm going to say it over and over again. You have no choice to become a professional networker unless you enjoy cold calling, lead generating, spending tons of time on it. Where do you find power partners? Rick, where do I find power partners? That, this, that's 10 hours. You can find them from your clients. You could call your client and say, hey, I'm looking to build a force field around you. I'm looking to build a team. Could I get the name of your financial planner, your CPA, your insurance agent? I'd love to talk to them to make sure we're all on the same page. And that's one way to get more power partners. In-person referral groups, if and when they ever come back, virtual networking groups. 
virtual everything. It's all out there. Chamber of Commerce websites, Google. I can show you how to find so many power partners you wouldn't even know what to do with them all. <clears throat> what I'd like to do is, is find a, a place in life that you're in right now. So if if I give you a pen and paper, how many different industries could you write down right now that are power partners for you? The average person is three, maybe 10. My wife has 163, and I counted that list like seven years ago. 163, not different people, different industries. She's had at least 3,000 power, uh, 3,000 companies, maybe even 4,000 at this point. I've had maybe 6,500 when you count the, the, the go-to meetings. How many do you meet with and work with consistently? And then how many coffee, Zoom, go-to meetings are you having per week? <clears throat> so let's put some definition to this. I want you to really think the numbers behind power partnering. You're going to cold call. You're going to do cold outreach, not to people who are going to slam the door in your face, but to power partners. If you're a real estate agent, to mortgage lenders, to financial planners, to insurance agents, to roofers, it's a more friendly thing because you're darn sure not trying to sell real estate to them. You're just trying to build a team. So let's talk about the numbers here behind it. So there are a lot of people who uh, messaged me for this. I said, Rick, I'm a beginner. Rick, I just moved to a new area. Rick, I don't have a big network. So if you look at the bottom where it says novice, that's where a lot of them are. And I'm going to help you move up this ladder. An advanced beginner, all your competitors are there too. There's numbers associated with this. And I'll show you the numbers shortly. When you start getting up to where you're competent at power partnering, then you're separating yourself. Now, this width down here, no matter what industry you're in, your travel agent, coach, real estate agent, mortgage lender, this is all your – this is – mortgage lenders. Maybe there's 500 mortgage lenders here, and maybe here there's 200. When you get up here, you're competing against very few because they don't know this stuff because they were taught to knock on doors. So you're starting to separate yourself from the competition. When you're proficient, you can start teaching power partners to your network. When you get up here, you've had at least 400 to 1,000 networking coffee meetings. And then up here, you're one of the best known persons in your industry. You're deciding who you want to do business with. You're constantly firing people, and people think you're a moron for firing people. And I say you're the you're the best. The numbers that coincide with this is how many power partners you can name. The more you can name, the higher you move up. The higher you move up, the less competition you're dealing with. If you can name 50 real estate agents, you're almost competing with no one. And those are the numbers. So it, it, when you can when you can name 100 different industries, you are in the top, top, top. And then when you're having coffee meetings. So real quick, we're coming into the home stretch here. You need to determine who your perfect client is. That's avatar. You need to ask the correct questions. You need to use the power partner wheel, and you need to make a wish list. Let's go down that real quick. What's your client look like? Who's your client? What's their personal? What's their avatar? I can help you create your avatar. What's the net worth? Where do they want to live? How the money come in? Is it cash, financing, bonus check, whatever it is, whatever industry you're in? Money's going to matter for you. Um, and then you want to ask yourself a question. Who already knows this person? Who already has my client? Who could I meet with so I could build a referral partnership with them and get a bunch of referrals from them? Always remember, if you're constantly looking for sales, you're always going to be looking for sales. I want you to step back. Take a deep breath build relationships, and build a career, and build a career. Now, here's the power partner wheel. Not a lot of people have seen this. So whatever industry you're in, plug it in there, and, and your client's there in the middle. And what we need to do is we need to figure out who else has your client. So, you know, for fun, you're a real estate agent, and put, put first-time home buyer. <clears throat> There's going to be insurance agents, CPAs, estate planning attorneys, mortgage lenders, handyman, roofer, uh, on and on and on. Again, my wife has 163 industries. You could fill this wheel many, many times. But you need to have your avatar first. Then you need to ask yourself, what cities? What's the dollar amount? What's the type of person? Age range? Circumstance? Getting married? First time home buyer? Empty nester? Investor? You need to figure all those things out to build your avatar. And then you start asking yourself, who else knows them? Who else knows them? Who else knows them? And you build this out. And then once you build it, you got to go find all these people, and then you got to have coffee meetings with them, and then you got to figure out how to send each other referrals. If you don't like that, 
then go get Red X, go get your phone dialer, spend thousands and thousands of dollars on leads, go knock on doors, wear your shoes out, and good luck doing it in the rain and in the snow, or when it's 130 in Arizona. This is what you need to become. This is called a connector. So in the 680 corridor where I live, I'm just going to use three cities. I'm going to say Livermore, I'm going to say San Ramon, and I'm going to say Walnut Creek. You need to have real estate agents that cover different areas. I know uh, Keller Williams and some of the big uh, EXPs, a lot of those big companies out there, a lot of them, Prudential, a lot of them, Berkshire, Home, everybody, has a system built in where if the guy's in Texas, you can send it to them and you get, you get, a, you get a, a spiff, and that's awesome. So you need to have a big network of real estate agents, but that doesn't serve the client as much as uh, they need. They might need uh, credit repair. They might need carpet, all that other stuff, and you want to have – like I know a carpet cleaner who's not going to Walnut Creek. I know another one who's not going to Livermore. So if I'm a real estate agent, I need to have two or three carpet cleaners, mortgage lenders, financial planners who speak different languages. There's so many different nationalities out here. We need to have real estate mortgage financial planners who speak different languages to serve our clients better. You need to build that up, and then you start introducing people. I guarantee you the mortgage lender one place wants to meet a real estate agent you know somewhere else. The financial planner wants to meet attorneys. The bankers want to meet and you start connecting your network to your network. When you do that, you're a professional networker. And when you ask yourself, how many coffee meetings are you having? How many coffee meetings are you having? Five a week is the minimum. You have lunch five times a week, have five coffee meetings. <clears throat> so I invented this, this term, you must become a semi-professional coffee meeting haver. And you're gonna become a coffee meeting haver, or you better get really good at cold calling. Now, anytime you're feeling down, your confidence, whatever, I, I'm really hard on myself, so I'll just do this to make myself feel better. And then this is also called testimonial selling to you. I'm indirectly selling to you by showing what someone else said about me, and it makes me feel good. Fred's testimonial. To say that Rick is a preeminent guru of networking is an understatement. I've been working with Rick for about a year and was feeling anxious to better my networking skills. I did one-on-one -on -one training with Rick, and he completely changed the way I think about networking. His advice has enabled me to refocus and revamp how I network. That's pretty cool. It took me it took me over 10 years to figure all this stuff out, and then the one referral away course is how we can really condense that and shorten it. So some of the ways I can help you is providing the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, if you invest in the 12-part course, I can help you write all your approach emails, help you approach power partners, do the recon when you get referrals, write your referral scripts, how to do your Facebook and LinkedIn posts, even how to do your, your YouTube channel. Um, I'm really good at all the video stuff too. <clears throat> and once again, here's that irresistible offer if you're interested in the course. It's onereferralaway.com. You go there, you see this screen, you click on this picture here, it takes you to a page with a whole bunch of writing. You click that button right there that says, I'm ready. You enter your first and last name and your email address, and it takes you to this page. Click on the coupon button. Enter the number 200, and it takes the price down to 595 Included is, that's about seven or eight hours. Everything you need to know about the basis of building your referral-based practice, the Facebook group, the 45 minutes every month of group coaching, <clears throat> the elevator speech training, text me anytime. I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching if you um, are interested in that. You do get one hour of one-on-one -on -one coaching with me on top of everything else. Hey, guys, you want to build a referral-based practice, I can help you. There's my name. There's my number. Text me. Better email me. If you want the course, it's there for you. Thank you very much for being on today. I hope you learned something new. And if I can help you in any way, I'll be, I'll be happy to. It's officially done right now. Thank you for being on. Thank you very much for being with me on my birthday. I hope this helped. Thank you very much. <laughs>